Hey everybody, welcome back to the Skookum Report. Today's Bigfoot encounter is called the Main Ridge Monster. And this comes from Bobby Short's material. Again, I want to thank her friends and family for sending me all this material and allowing me to share it on the show. Uh, the Penobscot County Ridge Monster in Maine. There are well over 3,000 Sasquatch reports filed. Sometimes we get these wonderfully friendly letters from credible and cooperative people like this father and son. They wish to remain anonymous, which I have honored here, but their names are in the file for serious Sasquatch research inquiry. And here's what he wrote. I have a story for you from the other side of the country, Maine. This event took place about 10 years ago, but I remember it like it was yesterday. My father and I were fishing for brook trout in the northern Maine woods. In 1988, I would have been around 13 years old at the time, and my father would have been around 38. It was a beautiful early summer day and the fish were biting. This particular area of the Maine woods is extremely thick and dark, and it almost gives you a feeling that someone or something is watching you. We were wading down the brook when we noticed the half-eaten remains of a snowshoe hare, a rabbit, lying on the bank of the brook. On closer examination, we noticed that the head of the rabbit was half-eaten. My father didn't think too much of this since he's an avid outdoorsman and he has seen nature at work before. But myself as a young boy was amazed at the sight and after poking and prodding at the remains with a stick, we moved on down the brook. We also noticed the water in the brook had been disturbed and since the water was moving slowly, we noticed it had happened recently. Even I noticed this at my young age, but we both didn't think much of it until later that night when we recapped the amazing day. Anyway, back to the story. We had caught our limit of brook trout that day and we were heading back to the truck. The truck was parked about five miles away at the end of a logging road. This is the road we followed on the way out. When I say logging road, I mean an old logging road, which had not been logged for over 30 years. It was very grown over, but it made for easier walking than through the thick cedars. We didn't talk too much on the way down the road and uh, until we came across this old cabin deep in the woods. And so we went in to sit down and rest for a while. And there was a little table in the kitchen. We noticed this log book sitting on the table there. Uh, it had entries from the owners of the cabin about seeing the Ridge Monster, as they called it and they gave details about the creature, which now matches ours. Well, after we rested, we walked on down the trail, when all of a sudden my father stopped dead in his tracks. I figured he was taking another break, so I stopped and examined the flowers and was just looking around. When I looked at my father and I saw a face on him, this was a face I had never seen before and I hoped to never see again. He was looking toward a small opening in the forest, for perhaps about 15 to 20 seconds. I became concerned and I asked him what he was looking at. Since female moose have their young this time of year and are usually pretty protective, and we had seen plenty that day. But he suddenly grabbed me and told me to hurry. And my father was very uneasy. We made that five mile trip out and back to the truck in record time. While I still had no idea why my father was in such a hurry, and it was hard for me to keep up with him because I was such a small boy, and he's a man over six feet tall. When we got to the truck, he told me to get in with a tone of voice that I dared not disobey. And on the ride home, he told me the incredible story of what he had seen. At the time we rounded a small corner in the trail, my father had caught movement out of the corner of his eye. When he looked up, he saw what could have only been and was a Bigfoot. The Main Ridge Monster. My father described the creature as being at least eight feet tall, and he estimated it to weigh at over 500 pounds. 500 pounds, man. The creature had one long arm grasping a tree and one foot up on an incline in the forest floor, and he remained there staring at my father and I for about 15 to 20 seconds. My father said it seemed to be bored with us all of a sudden and simply pulled itself up with one hand grasping the tree and silently disappeared into the woods. My father, through sheer terror for my sake and to maintain his sanity, never told me until we got to the truck. 
Imagine what I would have thought when he told me a 500-pound mythical creature was within 20 yards of me. I never saw the creature, only my father did, and he was amazed not only at the incredible sight itself, but at the agility and stealth of it. My father and I both concluded that we startled the creature when it was feeding on the rabbit down by the brook's shore. It followed us throughout the day, and out of curiosity, while keeping its distance, and uh, when I think about all the stories I'd heard over the years and how smell accompanies this creature, I did notice a strange smell when we stopped up on the trail, but that could have been the smell from the Cedar Swamp Spring. The brook has no name where we were fishing. It was early summer to late spring 1998, at about 10 a.m., and I don't remember the direction of the wind, but the prevailing winds usually blow northeast. I did notice a faint smell, but not as strong as some that I have read about. Uh, the most significant thing one remembers of the creature was the huge size and the silence it possessed in its movement. My father believes that it was a male because there were no breasts. The creature appeared to be in good health, and it was very fast and looked very strong. Now, we have heard uh, of the main Indians' stories, they tell of gentle giants, as they call them, that have lived back in the Maine woods since the Indians first settled there, and many, many sightings have been made in modern times even. My father is a well-respected man in our community, and he has never told anyone outside of our family, and he plans to keep it that way in order, order to protect the animal from pursuit and also ridicule. I thought your collection could use this remarkable sighting to add to the diversity this creature seems to have all over the country and all over the world. Please don't use our names. Wow, that was pretty cool. Um, I can't imagine being with my dad, being a young boy, and then him freaking out and saying, let's get out of here. I, I would have thought it was a bear, or like he said, a moose. And moose ain't no joke, man. They will rock your world. They'll kill, they kill people. Man, they're, uh, they're pretty vicious, especially when it comes to protecting their young. Um, I've heard stories of people being up trees and waiting overnight, and the moose will still be there walking around the tree waiting, waiting for them. Uh, overnight, even. It, it's just amazing. I think I heard, um, yeah, Survivor Man, Les Stroud, told a story about uh, when he got chased by a moose, and he barely could outrun it. He ended up up a tree. And I think it was overnight. And the next day, he barely made it. He rounded, uh, rounded, went around, made a huge circle, got past him, and went back and finally got to his canoe. Either that or he was he went to the shore and uh, he waved somebody down that was coming by. But he did get out of there. It's a pretty incredible story. You could search for it on YouTube. Les Stroud, um, amazing moose story or something like that. But... If you or anyone you know has had an encounter or a Bigfoot sighting and you want to share it on the channel here, just shoot me in an email at skookumreport at gmail.com. At skookumreport at gmail.com, and I'll get it up on the channel for you. It's not a problem. Uh, let's see. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment. I enjoy talking with you guys, um, meeting a lot of, lot of people. And um, I want to say what's up to Big Mike and... Uh, as always, y'all take care, and I'll see you next time on the Skookum Report. God bless you guys. Bye.